This week on my series on Lightroom Classic, I'm gonna step you through start to finish on how I do an edit on a single landscape image. I may take you through all the steps of how I do it and the order that I prefer to use. So stick around, check it out. Hi, I'm Terry Vanderheiden here to show you how I do an edit on a single landscape image. Now, I like to take my time when I'm doing my editing on landscapes. And just like when I'm photographing landscapes, I like to take my time and get it the way I want it. So there's a lot of steps here, but I'm going to take you through bit by bit and show you how I do it. So let's get started. Now, first off, I'm working in Lightroom Classic version 13. It was just released. So make sure you upgrade if you don't see some of the panels that I'm using today. The image I'm gonna work on here is a shot I did in Oregon of some waterfalls. And what I did was, I, this was shot with a 14 to 24, shot at about 20 millimeters to capture this area the way I wanted it. I had some neutral density filters on the lens in order to soften the exposure of the water that was passing through. And so let me show you uh, how we edit this image. So this is the raw image. And there's a few things that I wanna do first. So when we go into the develop module, the first thing I'm gonna do is do just a little bit of cropping. Up here in the top, you can see there's some kind of light areas that are a little distracting. So I'm gonna pull that down just a little bit. And then down here, there's some rocks that we don't really need. So we're gonna pull that up a little bit. We do wanna keep this as much of this rock as possible. So that's about as much cropping as we're gonna do. So the next thing I wanna do, just so we can go, kind of go back and forth, is I'm gonna create a virtual copy. And this is a pretty good technique when you're learning. Make a virtual copy and you can do different versions of what it is that you're working on. And it gives you ability to always go back to the original. So these are identical other than what we make the changes on this one. So here we go. First thing that I see is the first thing I try to do is I look at things that are distracting to me, things that I want to get rid of. So the thing that's most distracting to me is this patch of sunlight up here because the contrast, the high contrast parts of the image will draw a viewer's attention and I don't want them to do that. I want to make sure that something like this isn't going to be uh, an area that's going to distract somebody. So I'm just going to probably use the most simplest way to remove it. So we're going to go over here to this remove tool, grab the, the uh, rubber stamp tool and make a little bit bigger brush and then just brush over it. Same with this one, same with over here. And it did okay job, but not great. But then we go into the, the content aware section of this and we're just gonna wipe over that, start getting this thing to just to dissolve away so people don't really recognize that this bright area here is out. We don't wanna see that. And again, this is a really minor part of this image. So people aren't gonna really see this when we pull back and see the whole image. So let's go back to, yeah, it's not something, we're gonna also tone that down. So just that really bright light is something that I wanted to get out of the way and, and not, not distract me. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is, uh, in, in typical workflow, I'll usually just work down these panels in this order. They're, they're set in this order, and I imagine you can change them, but in this case, for me, I just go in the same order as the way this is listed. So we go into the basic panel, and the very first thing you see come across is color. So I wanna make sure this is balanced in color the way I want it. So I grab this eyedropper tool, and I look for something that's gray, black, or white, and obviously the water's white. So I'm gonna click on it, and that's gonna color balance this so that it doesn't have any kind of a cast going on. Next thing I wanna look at is the exposure. So I'm gonna just pull the exposure down just a little bit. So it's a little bit darker than what we would normally wanna see here because I wanna keep the, the tones rich. I wanna keep the, uh, all the colors to really pop. And I, I, as we go along, you're gonna see when I start using some masks that we're gonna be bringing some of those other tones and colors out. So highlights. Let's go down to the highlights, and I like to bring those highlights up. All I'm really concerned, see when I bring them way up, what I'm most concerned with is the water. So as I bring this up, you can see that the highlights come up on all of everything here, right? So in order for me to just work on the water, I'm going to go ahead and create a mask. So let's go ahead and create a mask, 
and we're just going to use the brush tool and we're going to take auto mask off and we're just going to simply brush with a soft brush all of the water area that is being shown so this is going to cover the grays and and any of the dark areas of the water as well as the white frothy parts of the water so when we start getting into areas like this that are you know around a tree that's when we flip over to auto mask and just mask in in and around the the tree and the bush so it does a pretty good job of capturing all the things as long as you don't click on some of the green of this bush you're going to be fine because it's just going to grab the things that are in the background and it doesn't have to be perfect but we want it as good as we can get it and make sure that our transitions are full so we're not leaving gaps in between see how this streak here that would be kind of a gap we want to just fill that in to make sure that that's all complete and masks let's go in here and mask in through here and again, this is a minor, we're going to make some minor changes to this that aren't going to be necessarily seen in, in great detail. But for me, I just think it's a little bit easier just to come in here and create a mask. And then anything we work with on this water area will be masked. So let's zoom back out to where we were. See if we missed anything. Yeah, we missed some gaps there up here. Let's go in and zoom it up into here. Again, we still have auto mask on, so you got to keep an eye on it to make sure that it's grabbing everything you want to grab and not grabbing things that you don't want to grab. So again, we're just painting through, painting all of the water area. Now you can see here, we actually put some mask over this branch and I don't really want to do that. So we're going to take auto mask off and we're going to come up here to our mask and we're going to go subtract. So we're going to subtract from this mask. So let's just take a soft brush and, and subtract. See the little minus sign in there? That means we're going to subtract from this mask. And we'll just take the red out of that tree branch. So it's a little bit cleaner. So this is going to be the water. So we're going to name this water. And we'll click OK. And as we pull back, we can see that we've corrected. I mean, we've masked the entire water area. So now what we're going to do is come in here to our highlights. And then we'll boost up our highlights. And you can see there that we've boosted up um, a lot of brightness in that. So let's go ahead and shut that off and on. You can see the changes that we've made so far. If you want to see just the mask changes, you can off and on on this little eyeball right here. And that'll turn off and on that mask. So you see what we did is we just brightened up the highlights inside of the water. So the next thing we're going to do is create some mask that's going to create kind of a sunlight type of a look. So let's go ahead and create a new mask. And this time we're going to use a radial gradient. And what's nice about a radial gradient is that the tones go start from the center and work their way out. Similar to the way a sunlight beam would come down, start in the center, a little more intense, and then fall off as it gets to the edges. So let's go ahead and drag a mask here. And we're just going to cover this log is what we're going to try to do. So we're going to make this a little narrower. And we're going to turn it. We grab this little handle and we can turn the mask and grab the center dot and move the whole mask any way that we want. There we go. And let's tilt it just a little bit more there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lighten and brighten that area that's happening right onto the mask. So as we start making the changes, you can see real drastic. As we start making the changes, then the mask goes away, which is great. So we can actually see what we're doing. So we wanted to add a little bit of of uh, exposure to brighten that up. And as we go down here, we're gonna also take and warm it just a little bit. So a little bit warmer type of a light to it. And then we're gonna also probably add just a little bit of saturation. So again, let's take a look at our mask. We turn this off and on. You can see we've added a nice beam of sunlight right across that log. Let's go ahead and turn it back on. 
Let's create another mask. We're going to do the same thing up on the log that's on the other side of the river. And we'll just grab this here and drag it across. Now it's pretty narrow, so we're going to just slide this around here. It's probably a little easier to get it into position of about where you want it, and then you can start kind of pushing and pulling on it to make sure that it gets to the, the length that you want. And we can tilt it just a little bit, get it up here just a little bit more. Again, we're going to add kind of a sunlight highlight to that. So again, we're going to come up here, we're going to take and bring up our exposure a little bit, and we're going to bring up our warmth a little bit, and bring up our saturation. So again, let's turn this mask off and on, and we can see we've lit up both of these logs very similarly. Now let's go ahead and do one more. We're going to create another mask, and we're going to go into the radial gradient, and we're going to just put this right on this rock here. So let's center this, and I think what we need to do is probably rotate this so it's a little more oblong. Let's pull that out. There we go. That's looking better. And again, it's really nice because the radial gradient starts heavy in the middle and then falls off. So again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to bring up the highlight, or bring up the exposure rather, just a little bit, warm it up just a little bit, and bring up our saturation. So now you can see what we've done here so far. We can turn these things off and on, and you can see. And if we wanted to get a, a really good view of everything, we can just hit the uh, backward slash and that'll turn off everything that we've done and you can see what kind of changes we've made. So the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to deal with kind of a new thing that, that uh, Lightroom has and that's um, the point color. So let's show you how this works. Go back into our normal. And with point color, it's under color mixing. So we go under color mixing and we can see here that we have two choices. It opens up as a mixer, which is typical of what we're probably used to. And then point color is the new version where it allows us to take our eyedropper tool and grab colors and make changes to just those specific colors. So what I wanna do is I'd like to make this leafy green branches of fern to be a little greener than it is. So how do we do that? If we come in here with point color, and grab some green, for instance. You can see in the magnifier, we can grab the green. And then let's just, we're gonna do something real dramatic here. As we bring that up, what it does is it grabs all of the green throughout the whole image, right? We don't want that. So we're gonna undo that. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to have to create another mask, right? So let's go ahead and go to our masking tool. And we're gonna use a new mask. And this is also gonna be a brush tool. And this will be on this here. So let's go ahead and zoom up so we can see what we're doing. And this is the this is the branch that I want to make a little greener. We have to have the auto mask on, otherwise we're not going to be able to capture this at all. Yeah, see how that grabs. You know, we don't want to. A little bit of spill is okay, but we don't want to spill too much because we really want this, the branches of this tree, to be greener. So we can just click in there and using that little plus tool, make sure that that plus tool is on the area that you want to have green. And then we can just mask out all of this little leafy area so that we can make some changes to it. Now let me do that. And what we'll do is we'll probably speed up the recording here so you're not seeing all this tedious work. It does take a little bit of time, but you'll see it's worth it and it's all said and done. So we've done enough masking of this tree and it, it's a little tedious, but it does take time. And that auto mask feature is awesome for doing around leaves and inside of leaves. So let's go ahead and come down to point color. What's interesting is that inside of your panel of masks, you have all kinds of options to choose from, right? So you have the ability to go from uh, the typical things of setting up your mask and then you have tone, color, point color, curve. So point color is new in Lightroom 13. So let's go ahead and grab that. And we're going to grab our little eyedropper tool. And we like to zoom in and find, there we go. That's the color we're looking for. So let's click on that. 
And we can see over here in the panel that it shows us, this is the green. This is the actual green that we just selected. So we can take our saturation and bring that over to the right a little bit. And it's a little yellow for my taste. So what I wanna do is I wanna change the hue a little bit. So let's bring the hue over and now we can make that a little greener, all right? That's extreme, but here on YouTube, I wanna give you a good visual of what you can do. And we can always pull this back afterwards as well. So now we've made this green area quite a bit darker and we can also go into our luminance. So, so watch what happens here when we slide this left or right. If we make it real bright or we can make it a little darker. So some version in here will bring attention to it, but not too much attention to it and enable you to show a brighter green of those leaves if you want. So we can see here that now we've created quite a few masks here, right? All these masks that we've created. But as we go back to our Let's go back to our original and let's turn all our controls off. So you see what we've done here? We've brought a lot of attention to the areas that we want attention and the other areas we don't care about. We're gonna, we're gonna kinda you know, pull those back a little bit. So let's get started with that. We're gonna add another mask and this time we're gonna use a linear gradient and we're just gonna pull down from the top because I wanna darken this area up here. It's not important to the picture. I wanna just not have people looking up there because this is the cool thing about photography depending on how you set up your edit you're going to force the viewer to look where you want them to look right so let's go on up to our tone this is inside of this mask and we're just going to bring the exposure down on that so that's just darkening that area it's not something that we want to bring any attention to we'll make sure the highlights are down and then same thing over in this corner and what i found is an easier way to do this is set your image on like 25% and then we're going to create a new mask and we're going to come over here to the radiant gradient and then drag this completely off the page right it's completely off the page now we can just bring this in to however much we want to use it if you don't pull your your enlargement back you know so if you don't if you were trying to do this in this kind of an area here it'd be hard to tell what what kind of space you're working with with that but here you can pull this completely off so you have a little bit of gray border to work with so you can see what you're doing. And again, we're just gonna tone that down, darken it because we don't need that to be part of the attention. Same thing over here. So let's do another one. Let's create another mask. Come over here and we'll make another gradient right over here. And we're gonna just darken that area down as well. So it doesn't bring attention. So again, what are we telling the viewer? We're telling the viewer, we want you to look at the logs that have all this moss on it. We wanna have uh, this looking really, really good. And then we have this bright green uh, leaves that are coming in. We're showing the viewer exactly what we want them to look at. So the next section that I wanna deal with is sharpness. And what are the things that I wanna have sharp so that um, the viewer gets the full effect of this image. And one of the things that I noticed when we zoom in here, let's go into 100%. While the water is softly moving, it still has some, some noise. It's got a little, bit of, a little bit of sharpness to it that I'm not really enjoying. So what I wanna do is I wanna change that. And the way we do that is we come over to our masks and we find that water mask again. And then what we're gonna do is come down to our panel inside of our masks and let's let's take a look at detail so this is where if we wanted to sharpen something we could sharpen it from here we could add more sharpness to it and then that would make even those other grains of water anything inside of this mask to, to appear sharper we don't really want to do that what we want to do is we want to soften the tone so if we bring this down here this ends up blurring the image and if we blur it, it's not gonna work good because there are parts in here that we didn't mask out that aren't gonna look good if it's blurred. So let's go ahead and bring that back to normal. And then what we're gonna do is go into effects. And in effects, let's go ahead and move this out of the way a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. These little palettes you can just tear off and move out of your way if they're in your way. So what I wanna do with this is we're gonna take our texture and bring that back. And that's gonna soften the texture of this water. Same with clarity. 
this is a softening technique to soften how that looks. So let's take a look at the difference here. That's the way it was, and this is after we've softened it. So this is a way that you can soften areas to then bring the focus on the areas that are sharp. And obviously on a scene like this where we've got water flowing by, we want that water to be nice and soft. In this technique, I'm actually softening parts of the image. Since the human eye doesn't like to linger on parts of the image that are soft or out of focus, we can control what parts of the image we do want the viewer to spend more time on. A softer area like the water here can force the viewer to move their eyes around the image and they're mostly attracted to a sharper part of the image. So sharpness is an extremely valuable tool. That's why I wrote the book, Razor Sharp Nature Photography. This is an instantly downloadable ebook, only available on my website, imagelight.com. In this ebook, I take you through all the steps to get those razor sharp images from exposure techniques, shooting skills, and post processing, kind of like we're doing today. Head over to imagelight.com and pick up your copy of Razor Sharp Nature Photography today and start creating sharper images for yourself. If you like this kind of content, please take a second to hit the like button and then subscribe. And then remember to ring the little bell to be notified of my next video. So you can see what we've done here. We're gonna go ahead and turn everything off, all of our changes that we've made here. Let's go ahead and turn this off and back on. You can see what we've done. We've drawn attention from the viewer to bring the attention into the things that we want. And we've got mask over all these things, right? And you can always go back into this mask panel here and rework anything that you didn't that you want to make changes to the water whatever and i encourage you to to name these as you go along it's probably a pretty good idea so you know what these masks are because if you come back to this image later on you'll be able to always work with it and find the right mask and do whatever it is you want to it so as we look at that we can see the changes that we've made and this is the way it started way we the original file and then we did our masking and our color correction and all the things that we wanted to do to this image to really get it to look the way we wanted to. So I hope this gives you a little bit of an insight into the steps that I take. I think that when we're doing our landscapes, we take so much time to make sure our composition's right and the image is exactly how we want it. Take a little bit of extra time in the editing and you can really bring this image out and make it really, really super nice. So feel free to reach out to me via email. My email address is terry at imagelight.com. And then also you can reach me in the comments below. If you got any questions, I try to get back to everybody who comments. Until next time, this is Terry Vanderheide.